Hey there guys, gals, non-binary pals, and there's three goblins in a trench coat digging through old computer parts. That's, I'm still, the computer's still wonky, but you know what? They're trying to help and I appreciate it. I think they're breaking more fans than they're helping, but it's keeping them busy and you know what? They're having fun. I can't, I can't fault them for that. Um... Welcome to D and D. It's D and D day. Uh, yeah, it's. I'm excited. I'm excited for some proper D and D session today. Um, Marta, me, made a big ol' oopsie. This cat wants some lovin's, and it's now. It's not the time. Um, yeah. May or may not have snuffed out a candle that wasn't supposed that I probably shouldn't have done. So, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Right now, Marta is crying black icker, so I don't imagine this is going to go well for her. Um, that's the long and short of that's. It's just the short of it. There's no long right now. Um, Because I didn't give you a long. I gave you a short. Um, Let me hop into Discord before uh, my friends get mad. (laughs) What do we say? Wrong Discord. Is he goldfish when that's hungry? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Except the goldfish doesn't Mm -hmm. zoom up and down your hallways at night. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> i don't know have you seen my t- have you seen my goldfish <laughs> what are you feeding it <laughs> crack it has legs there you go. <laughs> yeah because it's the it's the goldfish from umbrella academy yeah he was tired so i put <laughs> caffeine pills in his bowl oh, oh god. god give that little fish a little fishy heart attack <laughs> sorry i'm no, late okay. hello gentlemen hey hello. Hello. You ready for Marta to die and uh, become an undead? Nah, nah I'm down nah. for that. Uh, <laughs> join the dead. Join the dying club. Yeah, over join. Here. Yeah, join, join the dead club. Yeah, join dead team. It's fun. Team Wait, dead. I just realized we're literally dead team over here. Yeah. Dead team <laughs> Coming out soon in your theater. Near oh you. my God, you are dead team. So. So we have dead team, small team, and big team. Oh my, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Shut up. It's, what yeah. makes me mad is that it's tr- fucking true. <laughs> Hell yeah. Deal with that shit. Now we know um, a perfect way of splitting up every time, you guys. Uh, I don't know if it's perfect, of, but... Uh... Speaking of teams, uh, ladies, lady and gentlemen, um, who would like to give off the recap of last session? I died. You want to do it? All right, go no, ahead. No, I said it. I died. That's my only recap. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. The most important thing to happen in the session. All right. You don't yep. gain inspiration. We All right, so who's doing it? We explored the butthole nice. under the statue. <laughs> in this butthole, we found a tiny, little, adorable butterfly woman who lured us into a trap. A moth girl. She... Mothra. <laughs> And this trap included two giant moth boys that would charge and were assholes. After defeating them, we explored the cave a bit and found some cool things in the corners that will be further explored in this episode of Dragon Ball Z. The end. All right. And uh, Mr. Ludovic, you gained yourself an inspiration, my friend. Yeah, I have a sun now on my thing. So, Praise the sun. Here it comes. As Praise you, the sun. As the... As Zuck and Muds were discussing about their own uh, personal affairs and dealing with the the court of the Lipicari girl, the teams, the other two teams, one consisting of Ludovic, Shed, and the Brack, went to the area where it looks like it was some sort of pedestal area where there is a indent in the ground and 
through some time, they were able to discover a hole in the wall where they discovered a sharpened dark violet crystal that seemed to be stained. And the same stain is on the floor. And they are discussing and trying to figure out what that is. On the other side of the room, Marta and Chog discovered a area of what seemed to be well lit candles. And these candles, as they soon discovered, vary in age and group sexes. Which, these are all people with a horrifying visage of pain upon their faces on the candle on the candlesticks. Marta, snuffing out one of them, felt a presence. As they continued on looking at these candles, Marta continued her experiment and snuffed out another candle. It was then at that moment there that Chog, looking upon her in her face, noticed that her body was shaking and her eyes were bleeding a black ichor and out of her ears was bleeding the same color and the same consistency. Chog, Marta turns to you and she says, Who are you? Where am I? Oh boy. <laughs> I'm oh not piloting boy. Marta. Oh I'm not piloting Marta. <laughs> <laughs> so I will say to uh, to this uh, individual in front of me who's leaking black ichor. <laughs> um, so don't panic. We're companions. Um, we were just we're investigating. companions that don't even know you. Do you remember anything about yourself? I remember running. And why am I so tall? <laughs> looks at this entity looks at Marta's hands and touching her body. I was a... I'm a dwarf. This is... What the hell? <laughs> Marta, during your meanwhile, inside the mine, um, definitely not inside her body. Uh, the mu- the, the abrupt music change got me. <laughs> I don't know where the fuck that came from. <laughs> Elevator music. <laughs> There's just this like comical thing happening in Marta's brain. She's essentially in like an office waiting room listening to music in her own brain. Like, hmm. How did I get here? <laughs> Who the fuck was that? I didn't intend to play that. What the fuck? It was perfect all the same. It was. It made it so much better than you can imagine. All right. I thought I had like an alert going off of my stream and I looked and I was like, no, nothing's popping. I'm sorry, Harley. What did you say before the elevator music? Yeah, I got right. completely <laughs> distracted other than Marta and brain. Um, so just a second. I just got to reset the tune here. You're cool, my guy. You got this. Not gonna be elevator music again, right? No. No, you hear not. Son. So, Marta looks at her body, and this person looking at you. <coughs> my. I know I was a dwarf. And. Who am I? I don't... I don't know who I am. All I remember was... Was running. Deep. Into the stat... Underneath the statue where... Our priest was... Leading us. And then... Just a horde of monsters... Keeping us there. One by one. 
as the person points and looks. And all I remember was getting stabbed in the stomach over there. And then after that, it was just hoping everything taken away from me. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Who is doing this? I think I'm sorry, I keep cackling. <laughs> I know. This is supposed to be serious. <laughs> I'm, sorry. To be I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I think I just gotta Try pancake. I love rated music. One hour. Hmm. Okay. I just looked at the map. Why does it kind of look like a fucked up evil Shrek? Meh. It's totally not going to eat us or anything. Because it is. But that's what the person says to you, Chog. And where's my family? I I know I had a family. So, you know, we're gonna just take a big breather. And uh, oh my god, uh... Chog, if you want to, a little aid of your dungeon master mm -hmm. here, you can cast uh, divine sense. Which is a challenge, which is an ability that paladins can do. Hmm. I will take you up on that offer. Is Mr. Dwarf here, uh... I mean, I doubt he's evil, but... No. Probably just a victim. As Somehow, you, when you... Mm -hmm. As you use that ability, as your senses go out within a 30-foot radius, the candles that are 30 feet within you these are giving off the detection of being undead. And as you look at Marta, Marta has that faint glow of being undead. And with a bit of your uh, paladin background and understanding of these things to a certain degree, You come to the conclusion that Marta is possessed. I had figured, <laughs> I had guessed that, but um... Natalie has an idea of how to fix this too. Natalie's possessed, so uh -huh. we'll, we'll see when she's back uh -huh. <laughs> in the driver's seat. Um. I guess I'll mute for now. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll bring you. Oh, I oh I know. But uh, this well, person looks at the body and looks at you. And are we still in the city? Does it we, take it over? Are they all dead? So, just uh, you know, take a breather. Um, it's been quite a while since uh, you have passed. We are still in the city. We're still beneath the chapel, and uh, actually, myself and my companions here, alongside uh, another group of dwarves, have come to try and free the city. But um, I think uh, we should join the rest of our companions. We'll be able to explain the situation a little bit better to you. Uh... Okay. You notice that uh, as they're walking in Marta's body, um, they are very not used to the length and height of this creature, of Marta's body, essentially. It's like driving a new car, and they are sort of stumbling as they move around if uh if he's stumbling i'll 
I'll offer to, you know, kind of hold out my hand like I'm taking my grandmother for a walk. If you, uh, you know, need uh, some help uh, staying steady, uh, I'm here person, for you. This person happily accepts and walks towards the, the group over here. Um, Dabarak and Dabarak, Shed, and Ludovic. Yo. As you guys are looking at this weird crystal shard that is dark, that has like a dark ichor to it, as you notice that on the floor, you notice what looks like to be some sort of little slot as, the, as well. What do you do? Hmm. What do you three fine gentlemen do? Well, weren't we going to put the crystal in the slot and see what happened? So, uh, I think I, I had said that I wanted to wait until we were rested up just in <clears> case, <throat> you know, we open up another can of whoop ass. Yeah. Ah, yes, of course, of course, of course. Sounds like a good I'm in idea. a hell of a pickle, yeah. y'all. As I walk up hell here, I would definitely tell them to back off from there. I haven't heard this dwarf uh, mention that this was the site where they were uh, turned into candles. <laughs> Turned into candles. Okay. Candles? Par Pardo? <laughs> like, guys, just back up from there a little bit. That's uh, not just any platform. Yeah, but this clearly fits in there. I, I want to wait, but, you know, just... Oh, God, yeah. guys. I'm just going <laughs> to point to Marta. Guys, we got a, a situation here. I point to like the black ichor like oozing from her ears and cold and sinus medication. What's happening here? Yeah, I think she needs more than an Advil for this. Can I can I like walk up to her and do a medicine or a Maybe a real yeah real quick before you guys like start prodding her I'm just gonna explain real quick like the basics I don't know if you guys remembered last session or if you were there at the end but yes 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 um we had been like checking out the candles over there and at the end we noticed that like the candles each had like they had faces on them and that there was uh like the souls of the dwarves were like inside the candle and uh. Marta, after having extinguished one too many candles, then I just point to her, like, this happened. Mm. And also explain to the individual inside Marta that, like, you know, this is the party, you know, you're safe here. Just so he doesn't, like, you know, freak out. Alrighty. But it seems like one of the souls from the candles has uh, somehow merged with Marta's body. All right, all right. Uh, quick, quick team huddle. Uh, John, can you just come here real quick? There. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll hand uh, Marta Whoever, like a water inside. A water Marta, bottle. We just need to talk something over here. Yes, we're in a I'll ask. Uh, are Are you thirsty? Hungry? You can come sit by the fire. Get some nice warmth. What the fuck? Does it understand common? <laughs> no, but neither do I. Ah, shit. I mean, he spoke to me, so... And I think he understood, so... I'm assuming he... I know, I'm just common. I, I, I know Harley's doing mm. something right now. <laughs> mm hmm. It, it spoke common. Hi. Right. You thirsty? Uh, hungry, buddy? Need, need a snack? Why don't you go yeah. sit by the fire? Uh. Get nice and warm. Okay. The individual moves to the campfire and. Oh. I'll give them a, a ration and some water. We've. Huh. Nice to meet you, uh, 
to Khan. Oh. Looking at Zuck. I mean, we've kind of already been over this, Marta, in kind of loose terms to, you know, not bring that up. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I'm like, Marta. Yeah. As Santa. Marta speaks and says, who's Marta? I'm going to lean over to my boy and just be like, yo, something a little off with her? Hitting the head or something? I'll come join and be like, all right, guys, uh, we need to talk about the situation. I think that there's a lot of things we need to go over here. Um, Marta or Marta or whoever is inside there, uh, we don't know your name yet. Uh, what is your name? Just, just, just makes this easier. I don't know. Mm. All right. Uh, mm. Well, I'm gonna call you Fred. I don't know. Oh, you can sit Fred. here and uh, let's let's have a little Fred. <laughs> we'll walk away. <laughs> a little walk away. Let's huddle. All right. So, the Fred, where with her, like, like with the with the ears that Martha has, I'm sure she'll go over here the conversation. But <laughs> so that's a good question, Harley. Have. Do they have my mental stats or their own mental stats? They have. Well, those are physical. It's, like, it's as if they they're trying to adjust their the spirits trying to adjust to the mental stats of like well, if we're saying above table game stuff, they're trying to adjust to the body. Right. So they really don't know if they can like like they would have super keen. They would know they have keen smell as there. There's a corpse burning. The smell of the others that are dead around uh, her. Um, yeah, Marta's sense ears. of smell is kind of ridiculous. Um, they would not really understand. It's like a it's like a new uh, amount of senses coming to the person, and the person is just really not having a good time right now inside Marta's body. Okay, yeah, I didn't know if you would want like my, uh, her passive perception or not. No problem. No, no. Don't need that. Can't get a listen. Alright, team meeting. Let's go. Chalk, team chalk. meeting? Team huddle. Alright. Let's bring our heads together. There's some weirdness afoot. The, oh, oh, you, yeah, think. Zuck, do you I want me to stream? So, yes. uh, <laughs> want me to stream the game, Zuck? Somebody's uh, already streaming for me. Uh, oh, look uh, 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 good, all good. All right, uh, and we'll just, since Faz is in here, I'll tell him entertain our guest while uh, we talk. Okay. <laughs> all right. He so. starts doing the hokey pokey. All right, guys. So this is the situation. We found some. We found out. That, so this this man here, this dwarf who has uh, inhabited Martha's body, he mentioned that this platform points over there is where he died. They died. And they died. It. No. It. The the group of uh, dwarfs that were down here were slaughtered on this here uh, altar or platform. And uh, they seem to have been turned into candles, or their souls at least have been bound to them in some way. Hmm. For what purpose, My... we're not sure. When Marta put one out, it's funny because the first one she put out, nothing happened. But the second one, uh, well, you can see what happened. Well, <laughs> my, my, my first in, like initiative question is... Um, where is she? And once, if we get her back, what happens to whoever's in her body right now? Well, hopefully they just pass on to the next life. I think it's how they're no longer tethered to that uh, candle. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, hopefully we can find something quickly to eliminate the situation. I think Marta is still in there, though. Because uh, I could sense that there was some sort of a soul inside of her. Not her own, which is, uh, I'm imagining the dwarf man. But, uh, there's something else in there, too, so. This is a big uh oh. Dwarf person could be a woman. Mm -hmm. Dwarf true, woman. true, true. True, true, true. 
Like I said, we can just refer to them as Fred, all right? We've given them a name, so we can't just can just use that instead. Fred, <laughs> Fred. I have a feeling, should probably go meet our uh, homeboy upstairs, see if he could possibly take care of the, uh, uh, what's the word, possession that is currently taking place. Mm-hmm. Might also know what to do uh, about the weird-ass candles. Just saying. And also this, and I'll show the, not the medallion, but the, the crystal that I will show to the group where I believe it fits. And and this, which I'm guessing can either be what turned them into candles or maybe some hidden path, which I did, don't want to open right now because we're still a little banged up. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Wait. Uh, quick question about the crystal. Y'all said that it was covered in some kind of thing, right? Like, covered in some kind of liquid? Uh, I, for- I forget the, the description of it, Harley. So... Alright, so, on the crystal shard, and on the floor of this area here... It's the medallion thing. It's seems to be some form of darkened uh, liquid that was on this um, shard. This crystal shard. And can we tell if it's like dried blood or like more akin to the black acre that's oozing out of Marta? Uh, make a survival check or medicine. Ooh. Mm. Or we can just taste it. Either of those. I am also yeah. not the best. You can be doing also lick it. A different saving throw. <laughs> oh, uh, I have good survival. I'll do it. I, I'll, I'll, I'll help you. Fucking save. All right. Uh, oh my god. Oh. I have no that? sense of survival. All right. Shed uh, rolls survival mm. check of a DC twenty. Oh, so, yeah, twenty-five. 25. Ooh. The shed. As you looked at it, and you're looking at the shard, and it's in your hand. You're looking at it. And it's like, huh. Yep, that's that's weird dry blood. All right, mm-hmm. weird dried blood. That's great. But as you confirm that it is dried blood, um, but as you're holding this crystal shed. <laughs> As you're holding this, um, this crystal is weird. Now, looking really closely upon it, as you're looking at the dried blood, um, this seems to be some sort of shard of some sort. Yeah. It's like some. It's like a piece of a bigger crystal. Then mm-hmm. it's a shard. Hmm. Hey guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think this goes into like a bigger crystal, maybe. Because it it's... seems just like it's just like a shard. Definitely seems like it's part of a bigger crystal from somewhere. Mm. Is the spot on the floor that you guys had mentioned enough for this shard, or? Would it like? Is it bigger than the shard? Good question. We could measure up. Yeah, we can. I guess we could see. Would you like well, to? Uh, you know, uh, without putting it in, I'd, I'd like to go do some elementary. Uh, yeah. So, who's yeah. discerning the the shard? Well, I mean, I have it at the moment. Uh, I mean, uh, who's uh, doing a further inspection? Uh, was just a question to the party. No. Um, I guess Shed and I can do it together. Yeah, okay, that works for me. Cool. Make a uh, Arcana check. Ah, balls. Hey, that's why I said we can do it together. That's my strength. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Have a well, man. friend. That is a 23. A 23. This is the Kyber Dragon Shard. (gasps) I will take it. (laughs) 
I don't know what that I, means. I will hold it upward so he can't get his grubby hands on it right away. <laughs> give me, give me, give me, give me. Now, as you sort of like realize I'm looking at it, you remember in your times of study, uh, Ludovic, uh, Kyber Dragon Shards have an affinity for binding magics. Elemental binding, which is behind airships and lightning rails and elemental galleons requires a kyber shard to hold the elemental kyber shards are used also for as phylacteries planar binding mm -hmm. any other effects that trap or manipulate spirits hmm. like ah. souls and candles yes. kyber, ah. dragon, kyber dragon shards are also used for many necromantic rituals so I'm guessing this. I I'll ask the I'll ask the group before I do this. Should we maybe see if Fred recognizes this? Maybe it might jog a memory or two. Jog a memory or cause PTSD strikes. You know, let's, I mean, uh, let's roll That's those. technically a memory. What's the worst? Yeah. <laughs> the memory I mean, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> oh, there we find him. Body? That, that's a pretty terrible thing to happen. Uh, fair point. I mean, Biggs remembers dying. So does Ludo. It's fine. They're, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Laugh with a single tear coming down my face. <laughs> you knowing that if you die again, you can't come back. Death. <laughs> uh, oh. Alright, yeah. so... We could go back to, to the upstairs group, see see how they've managed to settle in the church. Yeah, I mean, you know what? That might not be a bad idea, actually, to uh, see if he recognizes the shard. See if we can uh, jog some of those thousand-year-old memories. Do you do this? Upstairs, after we filled in the rest of the group, so they don't just let Marta bolt past them when he tries to run. You know, Marta can't yeah. walk real good right now. It is true. He, she, she does have puppy or large puppy syndrome. Or oh, Harley, that's how big her paws are yet. Oh, Harley, fun <laughs> thing. Tripping over herself. Marta only has four fingers on each hand. So yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> just for like, what the... <laughs> the four fingers and a trunk and the tusks. <laughs> like, oh my god, I'm not used to this. Um, but yeah, no, you guys show the right. Kyber Dragon Shard to Marta. Or yeah. Fred. Fred. Sure, let's show Fred. Then let's see. Fred, do you have any memory of this? Or uh, I'll point over to the An right immediate scream leaves Marta's mouth. And oh, Marta, God. I need you to make me a charisma save. Oh, no! Not again! <laughs> Not again! <laughs> you are within 10 feet of Chog, so you have that plus three. I'm gonna need it. I fail. You got this. Oh. Nine. Oh, no. You notice that the body of Marta goes into a catatonic state. It is breathing, it is alive, but there is nobody inside. Do I fall down or am I like out on my feet? You're you were sitting beside the person was sitting beside Fazen okay. to be of equal height so they were comfortable, but they just like looked, screamed, and then they just like poof, collapsed. I let's and... go stabilize. That one's on me, guys. I'll take full blame for this. <laughs> you, notice, the idea. Idea. <laughs> you notice what looks like up, to be <laughs> You notice what looks like to be two glowing wisps leaving the body and both are floating in the direction over here uh, quick look for the one with the trunk oh god can you <laughs> how do you capture a wisp oh god there are two wisps oh no have a vacuum cleaner uh, <laughs> We put it into a vial. We just mentioned this shit. We have a dragon shard that specializes in binding of souls. Let's see if we can't just redirect this yeah, but, fucking shard. Can you just use it? Is it like a what, like a button on, button off type thing? Like there is no button. On, there is no button on this shard. But well, it's um, like a wand. 
All right, all right. So Ludovic was holding it. Ludovic, <laughs> would you mm-hmm. like to use the shard? Uh, in panic, not knowing, knowing my capabilities and that I do not have any that would help in this situation, but I do have a shard <laughs> with a somewhat understanding of it. Um, sure, I'll try to see if I can maybe concentrate my energy through the shard to try and pull the souls uh, or restrain the souls so they don't fuck off and maybe put them back in Mar- Marta. All right. Or try to identify I them. think Marta's going <laughs> to die right now. Ludovic, I need you to Marta make me a might DC die. 16 Arcana check. No, oh, you, can't get, you can't get assistance from this. Okay, and I'll use my inspiration. Okay. Alright, here you go. Uh, yeah, I believe in you. You can do it. Is 19 plus. No, that's just 19. 19? Alright. Oh, um, with a 19, as you pour your energy into this kyber shard, and it reacts. Though, you don't know what's is going to happen. Now, three scenarios are going to happen here. Oh, boy. I need you to roll me a D100. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my All God. Righty. Uh, where's the D100 oh, on this? Is there a D100 on the D&D Beyond? Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. Is it the top one? Or is it the... Oh no, it's the two it's the two dice, right? That's the percentile dice. Yep. Yep. Also, same time, Marta, I need you to make me a charisma saving throw, DC sixteen. No help from Chog though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dude, yeah. You got this. I, I fail. believe it's an all of oh! <laughs> Two. I believe he's doing shit. Two. Alright. Uh. And I rolled a 39. A 39? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm, I told you, Marta's going to die. Oh, Jesus. No, you fucking saved her. I d- oh. He did! He did! I did it. <laughs> <laughs> it was in between 70 to 100. The two souls would have merged... <laughs> and became something else. Oh my god. To the body. Oh my god. The second one was from uh, between a 40. A 40. You had a 39. <laughs> a 40 to a 69. Which was. One of the souls goes back. And then we get to roll a d4. On, on a, or flip a coin. Who goes back and who, and who oh goes into a candle to suffer torment forever? Oh my god! <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I would have been playing a, zero, a little dwarven person. A one to a thirty-nine was Marta goes back to her body, but the soul is de- the soul is saved and goes to the afterlife. Oh my it. god. <laughs> Good shit. God damn. A oh. hero. That was pretty fucking tight. Like, oh I my god. Be more bigger, but fuck. No, no, that's pretty big. Yeah. It's pretty big. <laughs> considering I balance the other half by continuing to fail my saving throws. So, Marta, you go back to your body. With a breath of fresh air. <gasps> and you guys notice that the other wisp floats. You guys feel a reassuring sort of nod, realizing what it is. And you notice that it just. Nothing dramatic, nothing like an explosion happens. It just, oh, it just fades. So Harley, slowly. what was my experience internally of all that? Was I just black? I was I just in darkness? You, like Marta faded to black. <laughs> Marta, you faded into black, and during this whole time, you—it's as if you knew who was in the driver's seat, and you were fighting them to get control. 
did I have like did I have any awareness of my surroundings, or just the internal conflict? Just the internal conflict. Um, Is it like when in like the, the the sunken place in like the Jordan Peele movie? What's that called? Again? Uh, get out. Not get, get out. yeah, get out. <laughs> yeah, we're in the sunken place, just like watching. Seems about right. Except yeah. there's fighting in the sunken place now. Um, Marta will kind of like, we'll kind of do like a little mini like push up position to like pull her face off the ground and like wipe the dirt off her face and go, don't blow out a candle. Marta? Oh, thank God we brought Marta. Oh. And she's uh. just like wiping the stuff off her face and she's just lo- got like both hands like fully like on her temples like she's got a migraine oh my god guys i think i actually did it (laughs) oh my god seb you're a genius no consequences we can uh did did what as you're coming into your recesses of your mind uh marta you gain a second level of madness and i need you to roll me a d100 this will yeah, go swimmingly for me. This has been going great <laughs> thus far. I either I rolled a one or I rolled a one hundred. <laughs> I think I rolled a one hundred. If you rolled a ten and two zeros, that's a hundred. I rolled a one and two zeros. You rolled a one. Fuck me! <laughs> How? How? Uh, uh. One. One. I rolled a one on my percentile die. I rolled a two on a d20 and a literal fucking one on a d100. One in 100 chance. Okay. One of those days. All right. It's just one of those days. Come. Well, you guys better stop me from crawling into one of these holes to yeet myself <laughs> t- into the ground. Because it's probably what's going to happen. I don't know. I think it'd be kind of funny to watch. All right. Well, you you can... Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> you can... Can't think of any proper insult. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Fuck off. I don't want to write a new character right now. <laughs> so, you rolled a one. Yep, I sure did. Um, as you look around... If I start hallucinating... You start... No, no, no. You see visions in a world around you that others do not. Yep, there's the hallucinating. As you are looking around and you are just seeing... Thousands of dwarves being lined up and like a machine like process pushing one forward, getting stabbed in the stabbed in the heart, pushing another one forward, stabbed in the heart. And these were dwarves of all ages of men, women, and children. It even came to a point of like gruesome of even um well infants and seeing all of this makes you lose your shit two questions real quick wisdom saving throw two questions real quick yeah um this vision i'm seeing is that vision happening in this room is it the idea of like this throughout the city it's happening in this room uh, and as a second question, is everybody being like very specifically stabbed through the heart, or it's just like a slaughter fest? It is a slaughter fest. Okay. It is a horrifying sight to see. Which you need to make me a wisdom save. Um, is Chog near me? Chog is near you. Thank fucking Christ. That's 23. 23. That's a success. I can roll wisdom saves. 
<laughs> you see all these horrible things. But the <clears throat> as you're seeing all these horrible things happening around you, you collect yourself. You keep yourself cool. Marta, you start seeing what looks like to be some weird picturesque version of strong emotions of the past that happened here. Marta's kind of like on her feet or on her butt. She's sitting on the ground and she kind of does like a little ground shuffle backwards into Chog's legs. Like she's backing up as far as she can to get away. I will lay on hands her for like five as she uh, kind of like brushes past me or into me. There is a lot of strong, powerful emotions. And somebody would like to give Zuck a screen share, please. I am. I have a screen share. Yeah, Shed's, uh, Shed's so streaming. Okay, 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 okay. I just, I just saw that. Sorry. <laughs> and if uh, that stream goes down, I have Twitch up and running. Nice. So, yeah, that is what you're experiencing, Marta. It could be a what? blessing or a curse. What do uh, the around you? What do the strong emotions look like? Fear and hopelessness. But like if you could give fear and hopelessness like a body. So I'm seeing an embodiment of it. Is it like seeing colors or like, like some green lantern shit? Oh, for this? Yeah. <laughs> There's no green lantern colors. It's just visions and the strong feelings that are around you. Okay, so I'm you are witnessing it's... in presence you're witnessing in the presence of something horrible being happening happened. But happening. But can, happened. Can Marta still see us? Like are we in the vision as well or Yeah, so I can melt together? I've taken my hands and I've taken my ears and used my ears to cover my face. And I am like holding my knees, just shaking on the ground. Man, this place sucks. Yeah, uh, guys, I think we should head upstairs. Marta's not looking yes. at me. Looking no, I agree. Yeah. And, and, but, uh, and, 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 and mm -hmm. go ahead. With the crystal. I'll, I'll look at Zach and be like, I'll, you can store this, but we might still need this another time, and I'll get it done. Uh, oh, absolutely. I'm going to put a arm on, or a hand on Marta's shoulder and kind of like calmly like ask her, like, hey, uh, you good? The second you touch her, she like jumps out of her skin and like scrambles towards Dabrak without looking. She's like terrified. All right, so lesson learned: no more candle blowing. It's no one's birthday, so um, Marta, <laughs> it's okay. Oh, we're yeah. here. Can I see them, Harley, or do I yes, just do. see? It's so I'll like drop my ears. Like you see, you see them, and you see. The scenario and environment around you. Can can I notice her eyes like darting behind me or like looking like to something that's behind me or this is like... quite obvious. Uh, oh, her eyes are moving back and forth, jittering. Yeah, my eyes are darting through. all over the place. Like I'll she... I'll look at you and then everywhere else. It looks I'll... it looks like she's witnessing a massacre. I'll, I'll look at her and say, "My about just look at me. Let's get up. Let's get out of here. I know. I, I don't know what you're seeing, but let's just let's just get out of here and 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 we'll, we'll come back when we're all feeling better, okay? And like, as you're trying to like pull her up, she's now just crying, and she just whispers, um, "I think I'm watching the city die." As like. She just kind of like does the thousand yard stare with a hand on the back of your shoulder to kind of like get her out. And as you'll feel her like kind of like trying to like 
bob and weave around things that you can't see mm -hmm. as she's holding on to you. Hi, right, boys. I think it's time to roll out. Uh, yep. Come on. Come on. Here. <laughs> Let's snuff out the fire and maybe we can come back here at, at, at a later date. Or after, after some nice rest. Mm -hmm. Nice log rest. Okay, As you I'm say, gonna... maybe we can come back later. Marta's violently shaking her head no, and just under her breath, just no, 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 no. Okay. Well, over and over and over. Go. We'll focus on that another time. Let's just get out of here. I don't Marta, like that this... noise. <laughs> Marta, this, uh, this effect lasts for six hours. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, you're about to see some shit in the church upstairs, aren't you? Let's go, friends. I'm going to Let's see go. it walking through the entire city to get out. Uh, yeah, and it just gets worse as you're going up the stairs where people are just screaming in fear. You feel like someone bumped into you running. And all you notice is that as you finally reach the stairs, you notice what looks like to be a dwarven priest with a horrifying visage of a smile on his face. And then you know that the door is open, but you see it closing as you know some people are running back up and screaming, why are you leaving us here? And all he said was to be one with the true goddess. And then shuts. And that hope is replaced by fear. So, do I see like a double overlay almost? Yeah, of, you're like, I a see. Of shit. So, I see it's... the door is open and I see that the door is also closed. Yep. Oh, hate this. <laughs> hate this. So, you just see us go through this image of this door. It, and, and we're we're, we're gonna... in like a stairwell where like she can barely yeah. fit, so she is literally walking through bodies. Yeah. Oh, even though uh, there is I'm, no I'm, bodies. I'm, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure other people are helping, but I'll I'll have like an arm around you or like uh, like hold like holding your hand like up like helping you up while we go. She's like, she's comfort. shaking like a leaf. Yeah. Like, she might as well, like, be going and, like, have hypothermia. She's shaking that hard. All right, so let's try to get some... In let's just get out of here. Hopefully we can get some intel from one of the priests or someone in the uh, in the party. And I guess we'll all go upstairs. You guys go upstairs and you arrive into the church. Hooray, church time. Now, since this place has been sanctified and blessed, Marta, you don't see any visions of violence or hopelessness. You feel hope. This place is very, very safe, and you do not see any of those visions. Uh, I guess we're chilling here for, for six hours. <laughs> Marta is kind of like, her vision is still like, darting around kind of like to corners and kind Trying of look stuff. yeah try, like because everything just stopped for her as soon as you take that one step it's like it just stopped um she will probably collapse in front of the anvil wait if we cleanse and just sit the and cry wouldn't we also have cleansed the cleanse the ground underneath the church? I guess it doesn't go that deep. Huh. Guess not. Because I know like in real world churches all the way, as far down as you can go is all holy round. God's, God's basement. Yes. <laughs> but the thing hey, is, you know, uh, we need to get their priest downstairs then to the thing is the... though, uh, gentlemen, lady and gentlemen um as you guys noticed going to what's the door i remember you guys saying that you guys closed it um as you have dealt with the greatest evil that was down there sort of 
in its lair controlling that environment you feel like this wave comes over you guys of a, like a breath of fresh air cleansing down underneath below the temple ah so like a wind the evil layer was hot. fighting against the blessing makes sense yeah. yeah evil hot moth chick was blocking the blessing okay that works that makes sense right. uh so the door's closed above us right don't, don't we have we have like a, like a key or a key? something, right? Yeah, because we saw that yeah. there was a keyhole before we closed it, or else we wouldn't have closed yeah, it. Yeah, you guys up. opened it up again. Yeah. For sure. To to leave the basement, you guys left, and you left it open, and the divine air, let's say, rushed down as the main entity that was controlling, well, the, the evil basement uh, is no longer there, and can no longer, and it is now you can have a certainty of hope that the other candles and people that were there are probably snuffed out and went to a better place. Alrighty then. As it was a divine wind. Nuts. Uh, my breathing... Think, uh, my breathing is rest? starting to... My breathing is starting to, like, slow down. Regulate. And kind of not, not not hyperventilating anymore. Thank goodness, because as you guys notice the statue opening up, you notice a man standing there in front of you with his hands on his with his two f uh, fisted knuckles on his waist and standing proudly, looking at all of you. Oh, oh God. greetings! You have came back from the depths below. I was worried uh, for a second. This guy. I did not have a key to go down and follow an adventure with you. But if I did, I would have slain any monster down there. I'm rolling inside mm -hmm. to see if he's just a <laughs> true coward. If he's showboned or not. Uh, go ahead and roll me that inside check. <laughs> Pardon me. Fuck, that was almost a nat 20. That's a 13. 13? Um, it's three. You, he ain't oh, a coward. Oh, no, sorry. He ain't a saving throw. My bad. <laughs> he ain't a coward. Uh, he looks and he's like, you guys just left and went down in the deep depths below. Like, I did not even notice you leaving. I was standing on guard, vigilantly guarding the entrance to this humble and sanctified abode this well, temple well good that's that's what we needed we needed somebody to stand guard and you did a great job ah thank you good friend watching the flank of the locked entrance exactly beautifully yeah, done i'll be right back guys Truly well glorious speaking deed. Of, ta of uh taking guard you might taking guard for a little while longer well we rest up a little bit we're a little haggard <clears throat> yeah not a problem, friend. I shall call for reinforcements and we'll have some proper medical care be taken care of for you. You seem to be bruised and battered. Well, and somewhat dead. Oh, you died. Oh. Did you die? Yeah. Good sir, let, my, let me lay my hands on you. That sounds wrong. Oh, okay. It is a power that we p brave and powerful paladins possess. And uh, he gives you 20 healing points as he touches you. Like, touches your shoulder. Nothing weird. Okay, I was about to say, do I need to call him HR? <sighs> nah, you Gucci. Okay, good. He, he ain't like that. Unless you want him to be. Hmm? No. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. He's too touchy feely already. Yeah, tell me about it. So, as you guys uh, take refuge here, and <clears throat> he looks around. Well, I shall call for some more reinforcements, and, uh, 
deal with this area here. If all that right. is all right. My okay. services are needed elsewhere, as a runner came by and told me that I need to be at the forefront of a fight, which is glorious for me. <laughs> glorious, yes. Is it nearby? Oh, but somewhere I think it was. Oh, it's right in front of me, right in front of us. As he, if you guys look at the map, it's at the commoner's ground, the common quarter. Okay. Anyways, my fight is with the enemy. Farewell, friends. And he goes off into the distance and goes and you hear him mostly shouting, I'm going to kill all of you. Godspeed, you glorious bastard. That's I guess we're going to do our own But as you guys are in the temple, uh, as you guys are in the temple, you notice a couple of other um, actual um, dwarves coming by, and these guys are wearing a different form and different set of armor than you guys are used to. You notice the armor make of the clan Narathun arrive. Mm -hmm. And you notice one man approaching you with a large, weird, glowing battle axe, a chain around his neck, decked in full suit of plate armor. With that glowing pretty red cool, eyes. Man. As he kind of walks... He just looks at all of you, <clears throat> nods, and then goes to outside the door, leans on his great axe, and just stares. Doesn't say a word. Uh, all right, are we, watch. are we? Are we still? In... God. It, did he step foot inside the church? I'm just curious yep. if the. Uh... Okay, so the Norathun. They can go into hollowed ground. They're not like corrupt because of their uh, use of the symbiotes. Okay. Um, well, has this ground been hollowed yet? Uh, inside the has. inside the temple, it has. Okay. And then the tunnel outside. Tunnel but he stepped inside. Is that what Harley uh, Harley said? No, he stepped outside, standing in front oh, of the door. Outside the door. Okay, my bad. I thought you and said then inside. Just and leaning on his great axe. So, Harley, what does yeah. Marta see as she looks through the door from inside the temple? Um, as it's like a like a fog. It seems that you don't see what's on the other side of that door. Okay, so I don't it's have. Like a dark soul. Uh, like a I don't dark have. Soul yeah. Fog of War, I don't have the uh, depth perception out, outside of that. Um, Marta is going to stay curled up uh, in front of the anvil and probably won't be able to sleep. Uh, fair enough. You just noticed this dude just standing in front of the door. Yep. Just chilling. Just he looking around. Cool, man. Do you say that to him? Cool. Yeah. You look pretty uh, cool, man. He he turns, gives you a thumbs up, and just keeps looking. Hell yeah, I love it. Thumbs up. Hell <laughs> yeah. Uh, Not sir, much of a talker, this guy. My boy. I have mm. a conversation with you. What's up? Now, this is probably going to take a bit of time, but if I get somebody to help me overnight, <laughs> I'll probably bust out a little bit faster. But you remember how I promised you that uh, upgrade to your katana last time, right? Yeah. I think if we're planning on spending the night here at the forge, why not make the uh, best use of it, you know? Works for me. Oh, well, yeah. Nice. Upgrade to a katana. Upgrade oh. time. Um, if anybody else would like to do anything in particular to their long rest, such as talking to this NPC or anybody else. Uh, I'm actually uh, taking a point of exhaustion. 
Um, no, you're not getting a point of the exhaustion. <laughs> uh, okay, I was gonna say because she will, Marta will not sleep. She will not sleep. You've had a uh, a rest before. You would not gain exhaustion from this. Okay. Are we doing a short rest or a long rest? Well, if you That's guys are doing long. a long rest, go ahead. But you would not be exhausted from it as you okay. have, in the same day, taken a long rest before. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think I'll just take a long rest. There's nothing in particular. I... Uh, Marta's just like, same position. She's got like, she's folded her body and is like, holding her, hugging her knees and like, in both her hands right in front of her chest. She's just running her thumbs over the webbing in her dream catcher. Slapped you guys there. And Do just and just looking through. She's got that like dead stare outside the door looking into that fog. I think I would go up to you and ask you like without too much detail like if you're able to talk about what you saw or if it's too fresh I understand but I watched the city die the people being sacrificed to whatever that was he didn't just sacrifice them he locked them in. And they killed each other. No one was safe. Not even well, the smallest. Luckily, if we keep doing our work, that won't happen ever again. Marta just kind of shakes her head, and she's still just dead staring into the fog. Try to get some sleep. <laughs> we'll need it. She gives you a little Even nod. Even if I know you, you won't. <laughs> she gives she gives you a little nod, but doesn't doesn't look at you or anything. Mm. Uh. All right. Uh. What does Debrack do? Honestly, I'm gonna go lay the fuck down. I just went through some traumatic shit today. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I'm that's gonna go bad. lay down right over here. Go for it. You just go and lay down, man. Thoughts of death and dying and the desire that you once, all of you had, is now gone. Which is a relief because you don't have urges anymore. You can now take a full proper rest and not have the, those false desires be in your mind. Being away at us. Hooray. Yay! We're having fun! Yay! Yay! <laughs> Very sadly, with that utterly cheerful note, I got to get going. Ah, uh, that makes sense. I'm right, sorry, take guys. Take care, man. See Bye. you next week. Yeah, see you next week. See ya, buddy. See ya. Bye. -bye. Bye. Still, plenty of players. Sensing that uh, the mood is uh, quite somber. I'm gonna bust out. I have a pack of playing cards. Anyone uh, want to play a round of uh, card games uh, before we call it a night? Hell yeah! I'll take your money. All right, you're I'm on. Never, you are helping me with the forge. All right. Uh -huh. Well, it, I I can be jogging a game of cards real quick and then help you with the forge. <laughs> uh... Oh man. We we gotta if we're gonna be doing this we gotta bust it out now, all right. Oh. I need to fucking help with that, all right. All right, oh, fine, need, fine. Need, need, good shed. I'll take your money some other time. Oh, oh, it's uh, on. Uh, oh, it's on.
Hey, uh, Chog, as you're, Chog, as you're looking around to see who would play a card game, you notice that uh, this armored man, this armored dwarf, uh, you were lightly introduced to him. You remember that his name was Kairos, and he kind of just like looks at you, and in a interesting stare, as if you think he wants to play, but then you look at him, he kind of looks and like bashfully turns away. I sense a fellow degenerate. You guys are adorable, but that guy is. Hey, buddy. <laughs> you, uh, hey, buddy. You want to play uh, some cards? You want to come inside? Uh, uh. We can play some poker. He looks and shrugs. And as soon as he goes to step through those doors uh you notice that his the chains around his neck start shaking and he starts shaking as well and goes back and steps back and he kind of looks and it's like gives a gesture of playing cards outside instead of inside oh fair enough can't get too close to God. I get it. I'll uh, I'll play out here with you, bud. Nice. Uh, as soon as you do, he sets his butt onto the ground and he's uh, rubbing his hands. Well, you can hear the scraping of metal as he claps his hands together and is like ready to play some games. What you good for? A hundred gold. Looks at you. Pulls out a purse. Clink. And I gives pull a out my up. purse. Clink. <laughs> Let's fucking get down to it, buddy. Nice. Let's oh, God. So, uh, we're going to go towards uh, Jacques, Zuck and Shed real quick. Uh, what you guys doing at the Magic Forge? All right, bud. Shit's been going a little sideways, uh, and you've kind of been waiting on this for a fat minute, uh, and I need a solid fucking distraction, so we're going to get to work on your uh, sword. All right, right on. Hell yeah. Somebody can move me to the forge. That'd be fantastic. Now, buddy, I'm mostly going to need your help with a little bit of just... Uh, uh, heat management and you know mostly just that i need you to manage the fire all right okay. uh harley yeah if i remember correctly i handed him back the uh ice shard uh which is the thing that i'm going to be using uh to upgrade his weapon uh to apply that effect we were talking about uh -huh. I I'm gonna do probably both of them so I can get the full effect. Oh, you, uh, you go full frost brand. Yep, the full frost brand. Uh, Alrighty. Yeah. Uh, which I will be doing. Uh, I just need to know what I need to roll. So I'm this is good. Used. So this is gonna be a. Blacksmith check. Mm hmm. And the DC for this is a DC 18. Yep. This is going to be all on you. DC the reward, 18. The reward is great, mm -hmm. but if you fail, it it does not apply to the weapon. And the Rizian ice shards are then thus destroyed absolutely I just need to know what the, uh, the, the blacksmith check is this is just my oh the blacksmith check it, uh, whatever's your highest proficiency let's say like for example if you are arcana for example because uh -huh. you can use your intelligence when you're doing your uh, any sort of tools check it's, I will make you use intelligence gotcha all right then so, it is going to be uh, 
instead of a plus three for the proficiency bonus, it's going to be a plus six, since this is using tools that I uh, am an expert in. Thank God for the level six thing. So instead of it being a plus seven, it is going to be seven a plus ten to this one. Nice. Oh, damn. I'm fucking it up, though. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You got one big old roll for this. You can do it. I believe. Here is just the die. Oh, fuck! That's a one, though. No. <laughs> But I am being helped by Shed. Does that give me advantage? <laughs> do you have inspiration? No, I do not. I used that like a while ago. Does That's anybody why I else that. would like to give their inspiration to him? I used it to save Marta. <laughs> I don't have mine anymore. And I think Brody was the one with the other inspiration point. Mm-hmm. I think Brody would naturally give it over for something this important. I think he does. So, yeah, I can ch- I can check real quick. Uh, uh, I was just hoping Shed would be enough to get me to that advantage. No, nope. this is this is, this is uh, something that's all on you, and with the Divine that's Forge here. 11, that's a... Eighteen, then you get. Uh, Dabrak doesn't have an inspiration point showing on his sheet. Let me see if maybe I'm confusing Dabrak with muds. Yeah, from what I'm seeing on their sheets, they don't have inspiration points. All right. But that could just be. I can't see it. Ah, uh, dang. Well, dang. We tried. There goes two Rizzy and Ice Shards. Big set. Yep. On and My babies. Window. I got them so long ago. <laughs> A, B, C, D, F, G, D, L, M, N, O, P. Wait, did I actually have them on my character sheet, or are they... They, they were in your character sheet for that. Yeah. <laughs> Russian scale, Russian pitten, copper, copper. Oops. Hmm. They are either not in my inventory or they are hiding and I'm stupid. Um are they in your footlocker? Uh no, what I mean is like I don't have them on my character sheet at all. Ooh. Yeah. Which is why I was asking uh uh if I was the one who actually had them on their character sheet or just somebody else. That is not meant to be a roll. I was just scrolling up my page. And there it goes again. Please yeah. stop. I don't, ha- I don't have them in inventory. Yeah, yeah, I don't have them either. All right, well, either way, it's not in any of our inventory, so. Yeah, I'm sorry, friend. It was destroyed anyways. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, big sad. Big sad. Uh, we tried. It is what it is. What Sorry that I couldn't upgrade your weapon, my dear. No worries, friend. Hmm. All right. Hey, we should rest. Heal up. Well, actually, I'm good on heals. I mostly just need spell slots. So that's good. Oh man, I need, I need heals and to recharge my key. Yeah, that's fair. Go before take a nap, I, before man. I take my long rest, Harley, can I put um my level for my uh inside my ring of uh, spell storm? Can I put a little? Yes, you may. Yeah. Oh my god. Okay, I'm closing out the page. Is it is just gonna keep doing that again and again? Just restart it. Uh, but during that time, uh, Chog, um, you're playing a card game with this fully armored dwarf as he just looks at you ready to play some cards. Hell yep. Yeah. Let's uh, do it. So, there, so at this time, um, there are 
Ah, uh, fuck, I forgot my own rules about it. You guys are essentially, um, are playing, uh, war. And, uh, it's, it's, been, it's gonna be a roll-off. Hell yeah. So just take a d20, and the highest roll wins. You got this! I'm All not right. gonna believe in you! That way you'll see. You wanna roll first, Harley? Alright, here we go. You need to be an eight. Alright. Oh. <laughs> uh, just highlight over it. I hit F on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Highlight over it and you and uh, press R instead. I'll just throw it. Oh, I yeah. see. That's so you beat the so you beat him. So nice to be done. Best two gold. out of best two out of three. Let's go again. Fuck yeah, let's do it. All right, this guy goes again. Double or nothing. You can Ooh. beat a dirty twenty. <laughs> okay, okay. Oof. Just gotta empty this man's pockets. Keep going. Second no, man. It, where so we're even. Last roll for Kairos. Mine. You got this. You Oof. need to beat a 19. Oof. May the power of the gods be on my side. You may use your luck points if you wish. Oh. I'll use a luck point. Alright, there you go. Fuck that 12. Uh, where, oh, and I have one luck point remaining, so mm -hmm. that's perfect. Alrighty. Ah, oh, pretty short. Uh, Kairos looks at you and uh, holds out a hand. You're expecting 100 gold. I will sigh and uh, drop a bag of uh, 100 gold in his bag and say, you know, well played. Uh, he nods his head and uh, looks at you and uh, he takes out a piece of paper and he writes on it and gives it to you. Mm. I will read a set piece of paper. Um, it asks of what's your name? Hey, my name's Chog, and I believe uh, I've already we've already met uh, Kairos. Um, he writes on the piece of paper again, and it writes onto it saying, uh, "My name was mentioned, but we never had a conversation." Mm hmm. How do you? Uh, um, you know, I ask him. Uh, you know, how do you feel? Uh about this entire expedition coming down here. Was it something that uh, you also wanted to do? He writes on the piece of paper and passes it to you and it writes on it. His hay and his great axe love destroying, killing, and eating those of the Delkir. And those mm. that are of of Kyber. Fair enough. I feel something uh, similar. You notice that uh, he nods his head in a very affirmative manner. It's like, nice. Someone like me. But not really. No, the 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 reasoning behind our our weapons is uh you know not too far apart. He nods his head. He looks at you and uh, writes on a piece of paper again and passes it to you and says that uh, after your guys' excursion going and dealing with the temple grounds you guys are going to be given a break and uh, there are a couple of things around the camp that needs to be done and hopefully that you guys can assist and help in any way or form 
Yeah, certainly. I mean, that's what we're here for. We just uh, faced uh, something quite evil down here, pointing back towards the church. And uh, I think we'll need to rest up a little bit, but after that, you know, that's the reason we're here. That's to help clear out this place. By the way, uh, how have things been going on the on the other end of the city thus far? He writes on a piece of paper. We've lost a couple of people and some good soldiers that he considered friends. But he will avenge them by reclaiming the city. Hey, we'll uh, we'll be with there. We'll be with you guys uh, until the end. We're not leaving, uh, you know, before the situation is uh, dealt with. He gives you a thumbs up. He looks at you for a moment and kind of grasps his chain real quick, and he gives like a a finger to say, uh, saying, "Wait." just a moment and you notice what looks like to be a straggler coming from the the market area here coming towards uh, towards you guys Um, he tells you he didn't tell he doesn't tell you he just looks at you points and points to the ground meaning to keep your butt here and as he goes and deals with this interloper of an aberration it's one of those dull grims weaker Operation Goblin noids. You notice that just you, you notice that he changes and then consumes it and then reverts back to normal. Changes into yeah, like, a, a... like a symbiote type of oh. like uh... He changes into this. Oh. Let me uh Oh, okay, okay. Oh, that's Ooh, pretty that's, cool. Uh, that's the snacky face. Uh, that's a symbiote Cerberus is what that is. Man, this guy just gets cooler and cooler looking. And then, he really cool back to, and then he changes back to normal. <laughs> Press. Walks, looks at you, gives you a thumbs up. I'll do the, like, the metal sign. I'll say that's fucking metal as shit. Badass. You look into his eyes. Give me an insight check. Ooh, 18. 18. Um, as you give him that compliment, he kind of shrugs, sort of in agreeance, but you notice his demeanor sort of changes. He, he droops his shoulders down a bit and looks at you and you get a sense that he didn't really want this Mm. I'll say uh, is that a a heavy price you have to uh, you had to pay for such power he nods his head he writes on a piece of paper I can never speak again. Was this something you chose, or is this uh, something that the Narathun clan uh, forces upon its members? I see he writes on a piece of paper, I am part of the higher echelon of my clan. And he chose this for himself for his clan in order to fight against the Delkir and the threats that are down below. He writes in his the clan motto the clan's motto is in order to slay the beast you must become the beast yourself. Which is a blessing of giving great power but also a curse. It is the reason why he is chained Because if he's in that form for too long, 
Then he would start killing everyone around him. Friend or foe. And that's what he writes to you. Hmm. That's heavy. If I had some <laughs> liquor in my uh, bag, I would uh, share it. Let me see. You know what? Actually, I think I, I think I do have bottles of wine from the. Oh my god! From the fucking uh, when we were in the water. Yeah. yeah. Oh my. I'm gonna crack open that fucking bottle of ancient like wine and ask him uh, <laughs> <laughs> with the Rizian ice mugs. <laughs> yeah. Damn. You, you want a drink, bud? He looks at you and you. He accepts it with politeness, and as you notice that he starts drinking it through his helm, he, and you guys, well, you cheers first, and he drinks through it, mm -hmm. drinks it through his helm, and gives you back the mug. Um, you notice that, man, that wine. A, it tastes really good. And B, you know, it's like a couple seconds later, he just starts vomiting it out. Ah, uh, lightweight. It's Oof. all good. He writes on a piece of poisoning. paper. He writes on a piece of paper. I en enjoyed the taste. It has been a long time, but I can never be normal again. Mm -hmm. And I can't eat or drink anything normal as he does a gesture of air quotations mm -hmm. do you have to consume uh, these things for energy or he writes on the paper no he never needs to eat again hmm. but whenever there was an aberration around this inner feeling and its great axe, his great axe, has an urge to slaughter and consume them no matter what. And that's just because of the design of what they are supposed to be. But if it gets out of control, he could easily could start consuming those around him and slaughtering those around him as well if it's not kept in check. gonna ask him uh, is this the uh, the same for all those people in your clan that have uh, integrated with the symbiotes can some of them have more control or do all he of them writes, have uh, mm -hmm. he writes on the piece of paper that the living symbiote tools that they use differ from person to person within the higher echelons of the clan. Those of the that work for the clan, for example, the the soldiers around him, they are not. They are not. They don't carry this burden. Only the higher family members do. Sorry, could you repeat that for me? I didn't hear uh, the last part. So regular dwarves within the Narthun. Narthun clan uh, they aren't given uh, symbiotes really, uh, symbiote tools or weapons it's only the the nobles that are part of the clan thus mm -hmm. that's why they are at the forefront in majority of fights so that if anything does go wrong then their soldiers can kill them off anything bad happens to them or they go batshit insane but for every member of every noble within an Arthurian clan um, they have different abilities mm -hmm. like he writes about his uh, his sister which you have met before um with the eyeball on the shoulder? No. 
It's uh, the scientist one. Mm. She, uh, now Stora. After asking us to find symbiotes and bring them back to her. Yeah, now Sora, she's the one that is the the one that helps make them through her magic, as he writes. But his brother, um, he has a clawed hand and an eyeball stock, which the eyeball stock is used to see within darkness even those made manifested by magic and it gives a ray the ray of paralyzation and with his clawed hand um, it amplifies his magic and is a deadly weapon used in close combat though he is a wand slinger which he prefers to cast spells Hmm. In a sense, he's a warlock. A super duper cool warlock. Yeah, sure. Hmm. But Kairos writes that down on a piece of paper. But the last one of all, he writes about the elderly man that's with them. Um, he writes that uh, don't get him angry I will definitely heed your warning is he uh, the leader of the Narathun clan he writes that uh, it is my father oh I see. Well, I uh I used to envy this power. It was uh quite an appetizing thought. But now not so sure anymore. He writes on the piece of paper, same here. He looks and then stares around him. He gets back up and lifts his great axe over his shoulder and he writes on a piece of paper again and gives it to you and it right and it says Well Chog, I'm gonna go back to my post. You look a little beaten up, you should get some sleep. Don't worry. I'll watch over you guys. Well thanks, man. I'll uh you know what? I'll give him uh, the pack of cards that I had and uh, I'll teach him how to play solitaire. <laughs> he Here's... raises his hand and says, I'm not accepting the cards and pushes it back towards you. And he writes on a piece of paper again, I'm suffering from, uh, I used to suffer from a gambling addiction. Uh, no, thank you, please. All right. Well, and you he also itch, you can't back. scratch. He also gives you back your hundred gold. Oh no no no! I cannot accept. I will. Oh, well, I will not take the hundred gold. He looks at you and uh, just drops on the ground and, and he walks away and he kind of just leans on this post over here, and just ignores you. I will walk in and I will not pick up the gold. <laughs> A dwarven soldier walks by during his patrol and he looks at the pouch is like, "Hey, uh, sir." Um, is this yours? You you dropped this, and Kairos turns and looks at the dwarven soldier and just stares at him. The guy's like, uh, I'll... goes to reach it, picks it up, <laughs> keeps walking, and Kairos is just staring at him the whole way as the soldier just walks off during his patrol, <laughs> and Kairos just leans against the wall again, just being chill. Uh, quick question. From where yeah. I'm sitting, I can see out the door. 
Can I see Cairo's glowing red eyes in the fog? Uh, or do yeah. I just see fog? You, you, so the fog is not like, oh fuck, I can't see past through the door. Like you saw like the interaction between Chog and him and what mm -hmm. he transformed into. Um, it's just that the fog is sort of like a days where you don't see the negativity that's outside. Okay, so it's not crystal clear like it was downstairs, but there's that yeah. sense of it. Yeah. Still, until, you know, six hours later. Exactly. Marta doesn't know how long it's going to last. Okay. Well, you do see Kairos do all of his jazz and his shenanigans with uh, Chog here. No. Yeah. He oh, seems pretty nice. Or shenanigans. Good guy. A little quiet. Good with the dice. Yeah. That's what you see. Kairos is just leaning and chilling. Is that would be it for everybody here? For interactions? Yeah. I'm good. Nice. Okay, I just sent this in chat, but basically I just remembered I have many. Are the are the shards like broken in half? Are they powderized? Are they just lost in magic? Like what's going on? Oh, they're they're destroyed. You cannot mend these things yeah the planar well, magic that have, yeah the planar like you'll be able to mend the crystal but the planar magic that was attached to them is gone forever well i could at least still you have know <laughs> have some crystals to tell so i'll still mend the crystals let's go for yeah. it you mend them, and then, since they are of Rizian, of the Rizia plane of ice, you mend them, it's like, ah, they're back together. Melts. Huh? Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> well. Well, shit. That's unfortunate. Damn. That is unfortunate. But at least it could put... No, it's not on the fire. Never mind. Mm. Well, either way. Sorry to break low. It's all Thanks, good. Um... <coughs> As you guys uh, take your eight-hour rest, and it is now effectively a new day. As you guys taking a brand new rest, it is now a new day. I would like everybody here to roll me a d20 with advantage. Um, did I do I still have two points of madness or did I drop to one? You dropped to one since you took a long rest here at the temple. Okay, d20 with advantage. D20 with advantage. Oh, pardon um, me. A wisdom saving throw with advantage. My you bad. have oh. got to be, you have you got to be kidding me. Suck. You have right. got to be kidding me. Look at my dice tower. <laughs> well, I got a five. I rolled four. I rolled sixteen twice plus one seventeen. Nice. Oh right, you said with advantage. Yep. I rolled 15, or, or natural twenty. Or yeah, but yeah. There we go. I rolled two threes. Ooh. Fuck. <laughs> oh, no. So seven. Uh. Yeah. Fourteen in total, I think, on the actual one that mattered. So I don't know if that's fair or not. No. Uh you guys uh I'm ready to make another roll for this uh, madness. <laughs> you got uh, this. I can't continue that. Let's see what happens. No, you're fine for the time being, but you just have a second level. Do I roll a d100 now, or do we wait till later? Nope, it's not of that scenario. Okay. So as you guys are finishing your rest and slowly waking up um you know uh kairos knocks on the, you you guys 
had the door closed, so he kind of knocks on the door like, dunk, dunk, dunk. Yes. Hey, uh, as you guys open up the door, you see Cairo standing there. Uh, gives you, Chalk, a slip of piece of paper. Mm -hmm. I will take a look. As you guys look at this awesome piece of paper, um, well, as you look at this piece of paper, uh, you are called in for proper relaxation and for other ta well to do other tasks. You're not asked to be pushed to be moving forward. All right, guys. Uh, guess it's time to pack up the camp here for now. We got uh, a bit of work to do, it seems. Kairos gives you a good thumbs up. Man, that's okay. cool. exploration, I guess. Say again. I said I, 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 I more of like group talking to the group as like a hypothetical, saying like, "Oh, we, looks like we don't have time to explore the basement." Yeah, I mean, if we're being called in, we should probably go. Yeah, well, in. I guess uh, we'll just keep that crystal and. Uh... Maybe maybe it's a blessing that we don't put that crystal in there. Maybe one of us would have been in one of those candles. Who knows? Yeah. Also, no one can go in there or out of there without us anyway, because we have the amulet to uh, open the, the statue. Right. Yeah, Zuck has the amulet. Should we close it back up? Then Speaking of we... which, I have both items, so I'm going to be giving the amulet back to, uh, to Marta. Uh, same. Oh shit! Actually, no wait. Well, actually, not yet. Okay, so I'll approach Marta early in the morning. Just be like, "Hey, uh, I know it's been rough. I don't know exactly how to say that in better terms." Been a hell of a day. It's been a hell of a fucking day. It's been a hell of a past few days, in fact. You've been going through a lot, my dude. Uh, sorry to approach you when you're kind of in a state of grieving, but uh, I have to give this back to you. So I'm going to do that. And she is like, if, like on a rare occasion, she is like at your eye level. Mm -hmm. So like she just turns and kind of like tilts her head, looks at you and like puts like a hand up and is like, I don't, I don't want it. Anyone else. That's clear. Anyone else. That is perfectly fair. Thank, thank you, but I can't. That's fair. Well, if you need anybody to talk to, I at least listen well. That means, that means a great deal coming from you. Thank you. I'll consider it when I'm ready. Very well. I will back away from her and then kind of throw it at whoever is closest and say, here, take this. I can grab uh, it. Okay. Or Wait Shed's closest. You can grab it if you want. Yeah, I'll take it, I guess. I'll cool. take this amulet key thing. Enjoy. Gee, thanks. So, as you guys walk uh, walk on out and leave this area uh, we are going to take our first break here a little bathroom break perfect a little bathroom mm -hmm. break alright 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 we will be back to resume the session at 9.30 absolutely wow. good shit cool I can keep farming an Elden Ring while you guys are doing whatever you do <laughs> I farm I farm. Grind never stops, my dude. Keep going. Yeah, especially I... since it takes like 400,000 runes for me to level up now. Jesus. Yeah. Well, I'm level oh. 210. Alright, that's fair. Mm -hmm. Mind you, uh, I haven't even started this game, so... I don't know how big the deal that is. It's pretty high-leveled. Oh, I, I could at least guess, if 
by the massive fucking numbers, but I don't know how difficult that is to reach, is what I mean. I, I don't know if it's difficult. It's it's a grind. I mean, it depends how you get there. It's time consuming. Is the is the like you could just you can just grind there, and it's not too hard. But hmm. there. Now, I know the Elden Ring is fun, but I'm curious: is it difficult? Have you ever yeah. played a uh, like a Dark Souls game? I have like... played Bloodborne. And I think one Bloodborne or Dark Souls game one time in high school. I must. I, in my opinion, it's easier than Bloodborne. It's easier than Bloodborne.
are willing to do one of these jobs, I shall list them out here. He pulls out a piece of paper. It would be a, a great help for everyone. Oh. This will be our first rodeo of doing uh, jobs. Nope. Let's, uh, let's uh, see what's here. Yeah. All right. So, the first of many issues is that uh, my men are having troubles with the dwarven language. Well, I can help with that. Hey, wait, 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 wait. You guys are, aren't you guys dwarves? <laughs> Two groups of people who can speak dwarvish. How are yeah. you guys having trouble with um, the dwarven <clears throat> I'm a human. Yeah, I didn't really pick up on dwarvish myself. Martel, yeah, raise, raise our hand a little bit. I can help with that. Quite a bit. She's the linguist of the group. He's honestly teaching me how to fucking understand. I can't blame you, to be perfectly honest. But... Well, he yes. turns and looks at you for this uh, uh, issue. There are my men and a group of uh, soldiers of the dwarves um, are having a bit of a, I think it's a misunderstanding of some sort. They are in a disagreement. If you can go and help that and clear those troubles away, it would be of great help. I think I can facilitate that. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. uh, in order... Sorry to interrupt, Harley. Quick question. Are we allowed to prepare spells or no? It hasn't been that kind of long rest. Yeah, you can prepare okay. spells. Okay. Uh, number two... Um, we are tired of being ambushed, and we want to ambush the enemy. And Bowman, uh, the war forger you've seen, uh, seen before, uh, is setting up a plan of an ambush. I need one person there to help set up this ambush, if possible. Do you know if this would be a, uh, a long range or a close range type of encounter? It's whatever you deem fit when working with Bowman. So you need a strategic mind? Well, it could be anything. If it's uh, a warrior you're looking for, perhaps I could help. Although Ludovic would be better uh, perhaps at range. Maybe with Bowman, two ranged uh, individuals would make for a better team. Well, it's whatever skills that you have with you that could help assist to the situation would be a great, well, a great help. Because I know my my cousin Dabrak is a very skilled uh, strategic mind as well, but above table, he's not here, so. All right. But, so let's hear him out. We... We'll, we'll keep this one open for now. We'll keep this one up. Yeah. It's, yeah Wonderful. Yeah thing is we have currently captured one of the dull grims here and we are interrogating it right now we could use uh, one of you goblinoids if you can well help us interrogate it put the real fear of those that hate them and get information out of them as well I'm all skin and bones I can lie my ass off well with any skills or spells that you have with you it would be of great assistance to the interrogation of this captured aberration now another problem that we are having at hand is uh on both camps, food supplies are running low, and <clears throat> with the next food train that will be coming in is uh, is going to be for a while. Though the thing is, if we can have someone to help make something out of uh, the supplies that we have now, it will be of great assistance as well. I am your man for that. <laughs> Thank you, Zach. You are so welcome. 
also uh, another issue has been coming up and uh, from your time being gone uh, a lot of our men are haven't been getting proper sleep due to their phobias coming out and haunting them we need them to have proper rest true proper rest and uh, we just need a a man or or a woman to help do the watches during the night just to make sure the troops get a full proper rest without attack or harm whoever takes that job you said fantastic you're gonna get a re uh, restful watch post uh, just in case uh, cool. He has the he's alert too, so I think he'd be able to fit that job. Right yeah, uh, that's oh, yeah. that's all me, man. Um, Thank you. quick thing, just above table for uh the guys. Uh, I do not have Revivify prepared. <laughs> just just as a heads up, I don't have Revivify prepared. Um, and I don't have the diamonds for it, so. It's okay, oh. we won't die. Z say, Zuck is the man to go to. Or not Zuck, we Muds. Still have, Muds. Does Muds have diamonds? Did yeah. we I, use I gave both Muds. Mm. Yes, you did. Muds still has it. He hasn't okay. used it. Yeah, okay. Mud, Muds still has some. Uh, the only person who... Marta went unconscious. Marta did not die. Oh. But Dabrak died. Mm -hmm. But Seb also died. Uh, in the that was a while in, back. yeah, a while back. So Marta oh, Marta ripped a patch from uh, her robe and produced a thousand gold pieces worth of gems. And six hundred of it was diamonds. Yeah, Harley allowed six hundred of it to be diamonds. So Muds uh, has three hundred gold pieces worth of diamonds. Yep. Okay. Um, now the thing is, if any one of you is a the troops are. Um, a little bit demoralized a bit if they can get a good show of entertainment just to get the mind away from the conflict that would be great as well I mean I could also do that when I'm good at acrobatics so are you sure? I can, yeah. I can yeah, also I don't need a lot of rest so I can also give you uh Oh, it's only on self. Never mind. I was gonna say there's borrowed knowledge and it lets you gain proficiency in a skill you're not proficient in. So you gotta become proficient in performance. But it doesn't matter if it's a yeah if you're not a great bard or anything, just any form of fun entertainment for the troops will be great. Holy shit, actually, Chog, go set up a casino, man. Hey. <laughs> hey. 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 How do you feel about dice and cards, Sir Reuven Gray? We can make a bit of a blackjack tournament. Yeah, we'll get the mind off of things. Yeah, that works a lot better. I no, have... The thing is, I don't want it to be involving money. Because once right. it's under the table, and... I could cast yeah, insight I... greed for your casino. <laughs> the thing is, uh, I, I don't want the men to be money. aggravated or angered mm -hmm. to the loss of money. Well, Just if fun and entertaining to do, Mr. Gray, if uh, you have a bit of coin to g give, uh, we could give uh, good odds. You know, to our participants of the Chog yeah. Casino. So it'll be a bit of a tournament to see who gets to the final round, and the final round would be, well, the person that would gain and win the jackpot. Yeah. Yeah, we could do that. All I right, that will be fair enough. As long as there's no gambling amongst each other, I am willing to put um, some coin as the reward. For the competition. Alrighty. Sounds like a good time already. My morale's lifted. Wonderful. <laughs> and, wow. morale down. and last but not least, uh, Clan Narathun have been uh, asking around, and due to their, well, their clans 
history. Um, they are designing a new weapon, and they already have a test subject for, well, an aberrate, a captured aberration. They just need someone to help use it. This weapon. I don't know what it is, but uh, they need a test subject. It's not too. Da it's not dangerous, though. I've already checked it over myself. What kind of What meters. kind of weapon isn't dangerous? Well, <laughs> what dangerous kind of weapon is it? But not towards <clears throat> us. Yeah, what is kind of weapon is it? It's a. Uh, I don't know what to really call it. It's a. Uh, it's one of those creatures that you've seen before. They had these quills on their backs, and when you, when you, when they pull their shell, they're able to fire these quills out. They made a weapon that can be harvested from those creatures and thus be used as some form of, uh, like some sort of hand crossbow of some sort. She calls it a needler. <laughs> oh, oh that's awesome needler uh halo okay yeah. i'm good i'm sorry uh i would love to fire a needler be... but maybe after the chalk casino closes if there's time i can't use crossbows i can i oh, can perhaps a little seb you want to fire the needler i can probably help with the archer and or, or the needler, either one. Mm -hmm. Well, why don't we have Thavarak go with Bowman? And then Marta said she was going to go help with the Linguists. miscommunicate. Yeah, the miscommunication. No. John yeah. can do entertainment. I'll do patrols at night. And. Is that um, Muds can cool do book? Muds Muds can do the interrogation. He has spells for that. There you go. And then Ludo can do a um... fucking animal. That that all scared the shit out of someone. Mm-hmm. And Ludo can go test the needler. There you go. All right. That worked for everybody. Wonderful. Thank you so much for this. I truly appreciate it. Now, I must get back to my duties. Mm. You can start this, uh, well, if you have the time, uh, you can start this uh, today and go to your, your designated workplaces. All right. And so where are these soldiers uh, that are in need of entertainment? So, so, do you guys want to roll initiative to see who goes? Uh, <laughs> we'll do it. Um, uh, we'll do it. We'll do it in order, and uh, as how I gave it out. Um, this is actually a fun little skill challenge. Oh, you can use uh, any skill you wish. And just tell me what type of skill that you wish to use, and how are you going to apply to it? So I'm very loose about doing so. Uh, a skill that you are not proficient in, and you're not really good with uh, such such. Um, Modifiers such as if you're doing acrobatics, but you have like a negative eight for doing this acrobatics, um, you can do it in a way where it's like uh, I want to use my strengths instead to do a really cool handstand or some shit like that. Okay. Um, so there's things like that. You can also use any form of ability within your character sheets or spells in order to accomplish these objectives. Okay. And I'm pretty loose and free about these things, just to have fun. Right on. Mm. Sweet beans. So, mm. now all of them have the same DC. So, depending on what you guys are going to be doing with whatever skills or uh, abilities or spells that you wish to use, um, I might be able to reduce the DC. So that will be a fun in that scenario. Right on, so, right on, right on. The first one, uh, Marta, you uh, are guided to to where this argument is happening. You see that it is happening 
Oh, uh... Over here, in the Burgers Ward. And uh, you notice a group of dwarves. Uh, a group <clears throat> of dwarven soldiers and a group of mercenary uh, human, well, humans talking to one another. And the humans are like, Hey, look! We got this from the enemy, fair and square. It's ours. And the dwarves are speaking back in dwarvish, but you understand that um, what they're trying to say is something else entirely, which is, no, put that in the loot pile, and since you got it, it's going to be yours. So why are you fucking fighting about this? And these two groups are just yelling at each other and just disagreeing, and it, it seems to be turning to a, uh, it's going to a turning point that violence might ensue. What um, do you do? I'm gonna walk kind of central to the two main speakers and kind of just do a quick little, like, a finger up to each one and, like, look each in the eye, like, hold on a minute. And to the dwarvish leader mm -hmm. in dwarvish can i touch you for a moment just it'll feel a little weird a little warm but i promise it'll help he kind of looks and these other dwarven buddies are just like eh, and he just looks at you and it's like all right sure and i'll kind of like put an arm put a hand on his arm and cast tongues Oh, nice. I think this should make it, uh... It should make it a lot easier to communicate in the short term. In the long term, I can help you, both of you, uh, at least get a basic understanding so you can communicate, work together a little bit more easily. But you should be able to resolve this issue now without it, without a problem. They can understand you fine, and so can your men. They, both groups look at each other and they start speaking. Um, could you give me, uh, I would say give me a persuasion check, but you're using your wisdom for it. Um, and I will cast Borrowed Knowledge on myself. To give me uh, proficiency with persuasion. Perfect. Uh, you can use your wisdom for that. So you can use a wisdom check and then add your modifier. Add my later. modifier. Add uh, my plus, a plus three. Y'all. Yeah. Give me this. Come on. There we go. Don't fuck me. I've been fucked all night long. Well, it's not great. Uh, 12 plus three. 15? Yeah, 15 is good. Since using the, the the spell beforehand and in order to communicate with the two groups and using your your wise words amongst these two groups, um, they're able to get their the matter resolved and the human soldier is like, oh, <laughs> no problems then. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mata. Thank you. And, and a dwarf. God, I'm sorry. And says thanks. Um, and I'll kind of look to each head and say, "You have any men who are interested in learning a little bit? I can take one or two from each group and give them basic language lessons to avoid this in the future. We think we're going to be here for some time, and it's I can't use this all the time, so." I think it would be a bright idea to have at least one or two from each of you who can speak the other's language. Uh, one of the one of the human uh, soldiers, uh, one of the soldiers uh, speaks up. is like, "Oh God, that's great! There was this really hot dwarf chick that I really want to talk to." Mm, you can take your risks there. I <laughs> would be careful, but if you're eager. Nice. Thank you so much, Marta. Hell yeah. Okay. And your name? Oh, it's Jeffrey. Nice to meet you, Jeffrey. And I'll look to the dwarves and say the same thing in dwarvish. If anybody wants to learn common. 
as one of the dwarven uh, soldiers uh, speaks up and uh, he says, uh, yeah, I really want to tell them uh, how they're using their pole arms wrong. It's uh, it's really weird that they have to hold it like this and they set up doing it like that. Yeah, I want to give them a word or two about that. I think those could be some good tips. I would try to approach it mm, gently, but it can be done. All right. We'll do no problem. We'll do a class together. <laughs> that one's that gentleman's name is Jeffrey. What's your name, sir? Bjorn. Is it? Did you say Bjorn? Bjorn. Bjorn. Yes. Okay. And they both. Uh, uh, are taken well taken pardon losing words um, no they are very happy with this it's finally an intermediary between the two cultures can actually like talk easier amongst each other without that um, wall of miscommunication and since you succeed in that um, you and your party are rewarded with reputation gained with the dwarven clans and the mercenary company hey. that means if you guys blow your horn they will arrive faster to your location oh god it's it's this is gonna be that ah oh, crap yeah <laughs> as you lose and gain reputation with factions <laughs> that is the worst part of rpgs the worst ah uh. <laughs> <laughs> too bad I'm glad I have tongues <laughs> Nice. <laughs> made that a lot uh, easier the next one was going to be the ambush set up with Bowman but uh, Dabrak is not here so we'll do that next session and that's a pretty cool reward as well uh, um, interrogation uh, that is with Muds that will be a different reward as well uh, we're going to go to Zuck the troops are hungry what to make? That's Be the question. Oh, yeah. before, before you guys start, sorry, before you guys start, I have a headache, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna head out. Uh -huh. My head all does right. not feel great. Um, but I'm gonna leave the stream up and I running so we have it for all later. These, I think it was the natural ending point because I think Chris had to go to bed and I and I. Yeah, it's not gonna be a problem. So yeah, I agree with this as well. <laughs> so, this is gonna be some cool stuff. So, uh, um, see you Zuck. later, guys. See you see later. You next week. So, Zuck, you arrived to go and see, um, uh, the. So, I'm gonna leave the stream up and running, um, so we can have it and not have what was missed because I am in the house. So, it's not like I was working or I'm completely knocked out from the beginning. Um, which is what, which is when I have headaches, which is what tends to happen is I'm not, I can't get up for the start of session. So I just missed the whole thing. And so since I was here for the first half majority of the session, um, I'm just going to leave Twitch up and running so it can be done. I'm going to lay down for a bit and, uh, We'll watch a little, we'll either watch a stream or some TV or something. I'm going to get some rest. Um, it's much needed right now. My head does not feel good, and the medicine is taking a minute to kick in. Um, but yeah, thank you for hanging out. I know it's not long. <laughs> um, but, uh, some as even as quiet as I've been in like very intense moments for Marta and the gang, um, especially with like the big fears and all of that, at least for Marta. Um, I'm glad the people candles were extinguished. That was actually a really big concern of mine about what we were going to do with those. Um, so knowing that that is taken care of is nice um i like these little like small side quest things that he does so it's not just like off from one big adventure to the next um so i enjoy it 
but I'm going to mute myself and step away and bring the game sound back so we don't miss so, so much for me just rambling on. Thank you so much for hanging out. Terrible. I always appreciate you. Um, Gina, I appreciate the lurk. Uh, when, uh, when before stream ends, words are very hard. Um, I'll pick somebody up and we'll do a little, little mini raid, little baby raid. Might just be me, but that's fine. <laughs> um, it, I'm getting to learn a little bit and terrible is helping me and learn about Twitch and the community just as a whole, um, and some cool ways to participate and help other streamers. Which is, uh, which I always enjoy. So, but I'll go on about all of that gushy stuff later. Maybe one day when I'm setting stuff up. Ooh. Excuse me. Maybe if I feel later, I'll hop back on and do something chill. We'll see. Um, for now, that's going to be it for me. Uh, please feel free to stick around and watch slash listen to the guys do their quests and adventures. Toodles for me. Okay. Chalk. The only way that I'm going to be okay with uh, letting you take the chest that we found way earlier mm -hmm. is to put it up for option in this uh, card tournament you guys are setting up for the casino. It could be that. Yeah. Mm, I don't think so. I think there's probably a... Uh... I mean, I kind of want to open it first. <laughs> See what's inside. <laughs> we'll pick that up next time. <laughs> so, um, the next man in the hour, uh, Shed. Yo. You notice a, a, one of the medics uh, comes by and talks to you. and These men have gone through a lot, and... Uh, we are going to need a man to watch for the night and take care of those shifts. If you don't mind doing so, that would be a great assistance, and you will be rewarded for it, for sure. I don't mind at all. Let the men rest. Thank you so much, Shed. No problem. Uh, what would you like to use for a skill? Um... Hmm. I was thinking... Can I use Hour of Reaping just, like, as I'm walking around? Hour of Reaping. <laughs> so you're making sure, it's like, anything that comes near is automatically frightened away. Yeah. All right, all right. I'm done with it. I'm done with and it. And I, I figure I can't see anybody else because they're, you know, inside buildings and stuff. So it won't affect them. Mm-hmm. Because it's the only things I can see, so. All right. And yeah. what skill would you like to roll? Oh god. Uh mm, see, that's a problem. Well, I guess intimidation. Intimidation? Because well it's one of my highest ones. <laughs> I alright. You know what? Hell yeah, I'm down with this. Uh go ahead and roll me intimidation. All right. I hope I fucking hope it works. No problem, dudes. Here we go. That is a twenty-four. <laughs> a landslide. Um, with your hour reaping out and intimidation, you just look intimidating with this aura effect uh, around you. And you successfully, at one point, you notice like one of these dull, grim goblin aberrations kind of sneak up and walking up, and you just stare and give the most menacing look and 
it being within your aura just looks in absolute fear and leaves and runs away. It looked like to be some form of scout to a larger group, and they are gone. Like, oh, gone, yeah. gone. To whatever pit they came from. Go back to hell, bitch. Nice. <clears throat> With this, the medic comes back to you, and uh, he gives you a handful of potions. Oh, as he looks at you and, uh, look, uh, some of the men, uh, we were able to procure this before leaving and we are willing to spare this for you. Um, please take this. So the party obtains four potions of speed and four potions of watchful rest. Uh, speed and he said four of watchful rest. Mm-hmm. Right on, right on, right on, right on. Nice. Hell yeah. Now comes to the fun part. Uh, Chog, the troops are demoralized and can use entertainment. How do you deal with this crowd of unhappy soldiers that could use some entertainment? So what kind of a prize pot was I able to get from Sir Reuven Gray before... Uh... You notice the price pot is of 500 gold. Alrighty. And, uh, okay, so I'm gonna, uh, let's say, uh, gather around soldiers, uh, whoever fancies a game of cards. Your gracious leader, uh, has sponsored a prize pool and purchased all your buy ins. And as I say this, I'm gonna use, uh, two smites on like coins and I'm going to flick the coins with divine smites <laughs> in both sides and flap my cape into the wind <laughs> as I announce uh, this game here <laughs> to the soldiers Dog, you glorious bastard you <laughs> this oh. is amazing so glorious <laughs> <laughs> what skill would you like to roll for this for this uh, and also before we roll for the challenge i will say to the soldiers you know for your brave combat as well as the buy-in from your leader i will also personally throw in this beautiful bottle of underwater wine and also a fucking perfect artifact a modron keychain a glorious artifact for the brave warrior who wins this game you notice some of the guys are sailing uh go ahead and roll me a uh, whatever skill that you wish to use within sense uh, of course yeah um I'll, I'll do persuasion persuasion all right go ahead and roll me persuasion <clears throat> That is a 17. 17 is a success. Uh, with you demonstrating and showing all these fun prizes of first place, second place, and third place winners, uh, these guys are actually really getting fun into it. They're just doing this out of uh, just having a fun time. Uh, you know, the car tournament starts off without a hitch. People are just enjoying themselves, laughing. And uh, you notice some of the dwarves brings in some kegs and they start drinking uh, to see who becomes the winner. And in the end, um, they go into the final round. And you notice uh, one of the dwarven soldiers wins the grand pot. And you notice a human soldier winning the second prize, which is the bottle of wine. And you notice one dude that is just so damn cheerful and saying, like, look at this! I got a key chains! <laughs> and everybody's just laughing and having a good time. And, uh, and congrats, you have succeeded in the skill challenge. With this, the whole party gets one free natural 20. Ooh. I'm, I'm sorry, a free natural 20? Yep. The luck, the luck of the gods are on your side. Damn, that's, that's in my nose. So does that, everybody does gets one. A, uh, everybody gets one free nat twenty. Is there a, use combat skills, saving throws, it's whatever. 
And can we use this uh, whenever? Does it like expire after a certain time or? Nope, you have it on you until you decide to use it. And after once you have used it, you can't get it back. Yeah. Nice. Next and last but not least, uh, Ludovic. You go to where Clan Narathun is using this weird weapon to test out. And they turn and looks at you and you notice the woman that is there. Uh, she looks at you and looks you up and down as a... Oh, so you are here for testing out the weapon, Dabarak? I mean, uh, Ludovic? Ludovic, you there? Sebastian? Ludovic! Sibu. I think my mic's fucking up. Oh, yeah, now we can hear you. Now, yeah. I'm going to have to go without my headset, so it is what it is. Whatever. Um, Wonderful. Uh, yeah. You see this weird weapon that has a bunch of holes in it and a bunch of needles in the back. So, you're here to test out the weapon? Wonderful. We have a target already chained up for it. As she kind of brings you out back behind a building, you see this chained up dull grim just going... <laughs> ah. Yes, that one. Eh, you know. You need to make sure it's effective against people. I understand. Against the enemy. Exactly. So, uh, during this skill challenge, what would you like to use? I think since my aim, in, ter in terms of my aim, is best, is he chained completely or can he still go around a bit? He's, he can still like hop left and right, but it's like only like a feet away. Okay, so what I, what I was thinking of maybe doing was using uh, uh, Mind Sliver to reduce... To, to, to make it so, like, if he tries to do dexterity to dodge, that he has a harder time. Mm hmm. Or, uh. Oh, wait, so he can still move around a bit? Just a little bit. Just a one feet left and right. But using my sliver, yeah, that's uh, totally okay with me, man. Because the idea I had was putting darkness on top of him and then using eyes of, eyes of darkness so he never sees the shot coming. Oh, if you want to use that, go ahead. I think I'll do that. So, you use your ability. Um, this one is, I can't make you do a skill challenge. What I need you to do for me is roll me a dexterity check. Okay. I do have uh, proficiency with crossbow. crossbow. Not proficiency with weird-ass weapons. This is very true. All right. So, dex, you said? Dex. Yep. Dexterity check. Oh, ten. Ten? You roll yeah. again because of the darkness. Go ahead, roll with advantage. This is true. 15. 15? That's a success. And as you take this thing, you feel the trigger mechanism and you cast the darkness shroud and she's like, ah, oh, now I can't see it. But you, she hears it go off and as you pull this weird fleshy trigger, it goes... <laughs> And like a like a nail like a electronic nail gun, it goes into the creature. Going... Mm, like uh, pretty damn effective. I'll, I'll move the darkness so she can see the damage that the creature has sustained. Hmm. It could use. Oh, the only issue is is about the ammunition. Hmm, wonder if yeah, I can put I it in. Exactly, right, yes. It's like if I can magically person. attune it in some way, that would be a great help. Yeah, but thank like you. Your arm, maybe? Hmm, maybe. She starts pondering and thinking about plans <laughs> uh, of how to use this. And she's just like thinking of, she sort of raises her like arm and like, imagining this thing on top of her forearm and she just points at aims and just goes like and she's just like pew 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 that would be that would be really cool hmm. 
there will be a symbiote though, and I don't think everybody would be totally down for that, but I think our troops will, as long as I don't make it sentient. Mm -hmm. And you can make it that if if you connect it properly, maybe they can, you know, regrow the quills, but through thought or... Yeah. What's in the fingers? It would need to. It would need actual ammunition. It would be much easier that way. That I'll give it some thought. Thank you so much. Oh, and if your friends are nearby, uh, I am quite the. Well. Quite the smith, as you may say. If you need anything, if. Uh, you know what? I shall give you and your friends uh, a nice, he helpful coating of bishek around your weapons. How about that? That's amazing. Thank you. Oh. And you're welcome. I now, you know what bishek yeah. does, right? Well, I'm not a real, real weapons person, per se, so I wouldn't well, have the exact knowledge on it. Well, it will give your warriors, those dealing with the aberrations at large, a bit of more oomph when fighting aberrations. Above table, if you're, uh, if you're, uh, if everybody agrees to it, uh, they can get a coating of bishek on their weapons, which will deal an additional one d six damage to aberrations. Nice. Does it have any negative side effects? Nope. Nope. It's just the this material itself. Awesome. I want this on my axe. Nice. Forever. You know what? Sure, why not? Nice. Is it um is it a sort of poison to the aberrations or is it more of a uh... It's what Bishek does is to destroy the chaotic foundations of aberrations. Do because most of the aberrations that we are fighting here are from during, well, the Dakan Empire and when the plain of Zoriat was opened. Mm. And that's when they invaded, and that's when your empire failed. Sorry. But Bishek was the most effective weapon against them. How would, uh, how would it affect if I had that on my armor? per se, or aberration would per se grab me with that. It's... It won't... It's more or less preferred and, well, it mainly should be used as weaponry, not as a form of protection. Mm -hmm. Alright, well, I'll tell my warriors to come by and... Wonderful. I'll let them get a nice little upgrade. That would be great. Now... You guys got that, you guys got that, you guys got that. We didn't check that yet, but we can't get... Nope, that's a nobers. The reward for dealing with the... Helping the hungry troops would have given you guys 10 super rations that during a short rest, you would gain an additional 2d6 of hit points. Nice. Mm. Nice. Hopefully they wouldn't have gone to gone spoil like the last rations I had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think this is where we shall end the session for tonight. Absolutely. And it's we will pick up the not. other ones for everybody else. Oh, Harley, question about this. Uh, also, curious. please, I need to go. I'll be back. I'm just okay. going to shut down the server, but the game is over. I have to use the facilities really badly. Yo, right, oh, man. Hey. All right. I got to take a shit. Bye. I'll be back. Yo. Cheers. Bye. See y'all next week. See, See y'all next, next week. week. See you later. Hmm. So shed, my god. Yo. Uh all right, I guess. You know, taking it day by day. How about yourself? Doing pretty good. Mostly just been working. Oh man, that must be nice. Uh 
Not really. I have to walk to work almost every single day, like three miles in the blistering heat. And then bust my ass doing a bunch of dishes. Walk home. Not very fun. Uh, at least you're getting paid. True. That being said. Oh, wait, no, her stream's still there, so I'm not going to ask. No, oh, yeah, her stream's just gonna keep going. Oh, that's gonna suck. Should we message her? Tell her that, uh, yeah, actually, no, that's probably what we should do. I'm gonna message yeah. Good. And hey, if she doesn't, I don't know, disconnect or whatever, Harley can always just move her. Wait, is that some only server happens? What? I'm curious I mean, on, like how people move other people. It's yeah. uh the ad whatever the admin of the server can allow other people to do it, but it's usually just admins. Gotcha. All right. Not been using Discord too well. Don't fully okay. understand. But hey, you know. I don't know what I was going to say, so I don't know. I don't know either. Yeah. I can't read my face. Which should be cool if kid, though. That would be cool. Truly would. Well, actually, depends. Like, if you can choose to enter another person's mind, that's cool. But if it's kind of like how intrusive thoughts work like they you just hear everybody's thoughts around you that could be intense especially in like high traffic areas that could be annoying oh absolutely that, that would suck
goes. Nope, nope, she's back. You left, came back. Oh, uh, you had yourself mute and mute and deafened. Yeah. So I don't think they heard anything we said. Quick update so, for the stream. Evidently, I lost sound, so they're gonna update me. Thing that happened after you was, I believe, me. So what happened was, I made a bunch of onion soup and grilled cheese sandwiches out of the three ingredients we had left. Mm -hmm. uh, failed. Oof. Everybody could. They were going to be fine. It's just nobody particularly enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, direct. Tog. Tog decided. Uh, I didn't hear any of that. You cut out. After me was Chog. Okay. Chog on the most fabulous, fantastic tournament, putting up such a fantastic. Uh, and a bunch of items and he did such a great job he earned everybody a free nat 20 uh, whenever they like it Ooh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. not even that's inspiration on steroids and not only that I uh, went on patrol all by myself and okay. scared everything away. Of course you went on patrol by yourself. I did hear you say you wanted to use the Reaper or some 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 Hour of Reaping. Yeah. Which sounds cool as fuck. What? Wait. Everything that came close. Uh, great. Love that shit. Sorry. And then Sorry to cut and run early. It's my head just does not feel good. Okay. Um, you said there was there was more, right? Am I making that yes. up? Yeah, because Ludovic had stuff. Yeah, Ludo yeah. used the needler and fucking decimated that thing. <laughs> but it's, <laughs> it's like a one and done kind of thing. So she's trying to figure it out. And we all got some kind of coating for our weapons. Yeah, I check. saw the anti aberration. Yes, by check. check. It's that shit that's in the mines that I keep trying to push towards. You said you said you cooked to what? My check is the item that I've been trying to get us to push towards oh uh, if we can get the fights our weapons all of the fights that we get into all of the melee fights are going to become a lot easier as we'll be doing an extra d6 of the anti-aberration basically oh so kind of like a silvered weapon but with a little bit of oomph yeah that's what's up all right that's pretty cool. That's pretty dope. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of what happened. Uh, there were two others, but we didn't go into them because they're not here. Uh, and then we kind of ended for the day. Kind of just wait.
Seeb's name is Sebastian, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sebastian. What's it called? Um. Now, uh, someone from another streamer I just started following yesterday popped over in a chat here. And they were like, I, I noticed someone had a sim similar name to me, Sebastian. And I was like, huh. I needed to make sure. I'm like, he is. Seeb's is Sebastian, right? I had to check. Is Harley still here? Did he have He went like a shit. <laughs> oh my god of course no, he, i mean he did like, oh yeah i know it's just funny like just the matter of fact like he went to poop <laughs> hey man sometimes you just gotta you gotta do what you gotta do body does what the body does man so today I learned I don't like cherry limeade. <laughs> it tastes like key lime pie flavored with cherry, and that is not a good taste in my yeah, brain. It doesn't sound good. No, it's not. Oh, I mean, I'll drink it. It's not, like, atrociously bad, but I don't know if I'm going to drink all of it. That's fair. Yeah, Seebs is definitely very chill. A lot of the guys in here, I think almost all, I think everybody in here is pretty chill. Like, we have our moments where we're, like, high-key chaos, but we can also be very, like, we can be vibes. You know, when we are knowing what we're doing. Which, which is, is never. Which is never. <laughs> which is never. Or, you know, when Shed is not running off on his own to do dumb shit. Oh, hey, look, a shiny object. Let's go see what it is. Oh, it's a monster. Oh, hey, look, everybody but Shed died. Cool. <laughs> that is exactly how that goes. Hey, listen, nobody died today. No, Marta just got possessed, which was Marta's own doing. But yes, I think I, um, I was very close to dying. Like the spiritual death. I would have had to, I probably would have ended up having to talk to Harley on the side and being like, okay, we got to nail out this new character because uh, it would be Marta's body with a different person. Like, imagine if the spirits fused together. Dude, that would have been fucking weird. Dude, I thought, okay. That would have been wild. Seen... Plus, I think that, I think that person might have been like, a child or very young? Ah, uh, you would sort of had multiple personalities. It's fine. You would have been fine. No, it it would have fused together. It would have been very much a uh uh like a fusion from Dragon Ball Z, but with a, it's not bodily, it's just mentally. Oh, that would be awesome. Fusion dance or Patara earrings? I don't know what the latter is, but I know the fusion dance. I don't remember how long the fusion dance is. I remember a good chunk of it. It's about five seconds. Yeah, it's few tippy toes, fingers up, pointed, yep. point out, jun, jun, tippy toe in, <sighs> big stance, ah. ah. <laughs> I think that's it. I think that's all the fusion dances, is I, if I remember right. But I know, uh, um, Goten and Trunks ride the struggle bus with that for a long time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's fine. So do Goku and Vegeta, so... Well, I fine. mean, Goku and Vegeta, that kind of tracks because they're kind of like friendly nemeses. But like also, Goten and Trunks are like little friends, <laughs> but they're children. It also probably doesn't help that Goku's got like a foot on Vegeta. 
That doesn't help either. So he's got to do like an extra bend down so it almost looks like a wonky shaped M. Yep. Extra dumb. Extra dumb. Um, let's see. Does anyone think? Oh, she's playing observation duty. There's um, there's a channel I found. It's all, it's just a stream of otters. I love that. It's amazing. I love that. Even if they are inland dolphins. I mean, they're not as bad as dolphins, but they can be pretty rough. I don't know. I, I don't think otters rape people for no reason. Not dolphins are mean. Dolphins will rip you apart. Yeah, dolphins will rip you apart. If I recall correctly, there have been stories of otters, like drowning creatures to like eat or do bad things to it's otters okay. otters also yeah if i recall correctly otters can be little bastards again not as bad as dolphins but nothing is as bad as a dolphin okay i'm gonna end stream here and we're gonna One. go raid gina that's what you do you raid grow your network yeah man the stream was fun yesterday i enjoyed it i sat there and hung out for a while went from because i was playing ghostwire tokyo well i played ghostwire tokyo and then i uh had like a quote-unquote D, D session with tom where we did some uh some item creation rather than like um gameplay game and terrible and i want to say it was what doc will i don't think i don't know if gnome was there i don't think so but terrible's like you should raid gina in the rough and i was like done thank you for reminding me because my ass forgets and so i went over there and i hung out there for a while and then raided somebody else when she was done and then I got caught in that <laughs> in that last stream, and Gina was like, "Go to bed." It's like never, because I've been up for twenty four hours. Ah, it's fine. I mm. do that. My body. Hates I also. It. I also am twenty seven and don't have a job, so I can get away with it because I can sleep for a day. But that's what ends up happening on my days off. It's I sleep for a day, and then it's like, well. Fuck. All right, let's go raid Gina in the rough. Let's do this thing. I'm sorry. Is her name Gina in the rough? <sighs> uh, am I saying that right? I believe it is. Uh, yeah, Gina in the rough. She's Welcome playing... back, Carly. Feel better. She's playing Dead uh. by Daylight. Or no? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. She's playing Dead by Daylight. Save the game. Save that game. game Save the game so you don't lose it. Mm -hmm. Why is Gina not popping? Also, Zuck, what you wanted to talk about? All right. So two things I wanted to bring up for future reference and skill things, the skill checks. Mm -hmm. uh, are tool checks allowed in the skill checks yeah. as well? Yes. You know, I will fantastic. check you boys later. Have a good night. Peace yeah. out. Good night. All right, that is officially going to end the stream. So have a good night. Shit, Tony, thank you for popping over and saying hello. Terrible. Thank you, as always. Let's go give Gina some love, and let's laugh at some chaos um, and hang out there for a while. I might just hang out there in bed we'll see we'll see what happens but have a good night you guys are great um toodles <laughs>